Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Horror Room. I'm Travis Bruce, and today we're doing another indie spotlight. I have an indie director here with us. He has a sinister short. It's called D. Popeye. I have Chaz Purvey. Chaz, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing very well. Hello. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure having you on. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about D. Popeye. Okay. Um, it, it's my... It was the third. I've made four short films, and this was my third of my short films. And it came on the back of a film I made called The Taxidermist, which was the biggest production I'd made. It was still a short film, but it had um, uh, some had one big sort of person in the UK acting in it, a, a comedian, but acting in a straight role. And um, I had a lot of people involved. I had musicians, composers. Even though I'm a musician myself, I thought I'd get other people to do the work. And it was a tough film, to not only to make, but to edit. As we all know, making films is is, is hard work, especially when you're it sort is. of a man outfit. So I roped in a few more people working on set. We filmed it over two and a half days. Uh, but the editing took a long, long time. And um, you know what they say, the best thing to do after falling off a bike is to get back on again. And because it sort of left me a little bit bruised, sort of financially as well as mentally, I thought <laughs> I'd do a super short film. And um, I had an idea for De Papa, and I put it down as like experimental, which is lazy person's talk for saying it's not really, um, you know, got a, a story as such. Obviously, there is a story on screen, but it introduces some characters that I'm looking to develop further and uh, hopefully do something better with that. And I'm already working on a, a De Papa 2, which uh, follows nice. on with new characters. So the, the plan being um, just do something or well, the plan was to just do something really quick, quite effective, um, quite shocking. I learned a lot from the other film, The Taxidermist, especially around the editing and just keeping things short and tight. And it comes in at three minutes, I think on right on three minutes. And uh, it was great fun to make, wonderful cast. There's only two people in it, but um, it was really good fun to make. And uh, it sort of got me back on the bike riding again. And I got into top gear, shall we say, <laughs> very quickly. Now, as a filmmaker, is it tough to get that same feeling of terror to a film watcher in three minutes? You had to cram it in three minutes compared to a film uh, to making a you know feature length or even a what uh, a classic short uh, film you know running about fifteen to forty minutes. Yeah, well, well this is it. I, I, the, the, the first film I made, which is another sort of ghost story called Psychochromatic, um, you know, I'll, I'll obviously share the links if you, if you want those as well, by all means. Definitely. That that was, um, when I look back on it now, I, I did too much. That, that was, I think, about a 13 minute film. In fact, it was 13 minutes, 13 seconds, and 13 frames. I kid you not, that's exactly how it came out. <laughs> well, you know, I've been a lucky number. And I think I held some of the shots just a bit too long. And I, I, then I sort of realizing you've got to be tighter. And I'd rather have a good five minute film than an average 10 minute film, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So when I did De Papa, I really did cut it, trim it down. And the, if you like, the terror in that really comes in the last few frames of the film and it was great fun to make but explaining it to the actresses one of which i'd never worked with before was interesting because i'd never met her i, I sort of saw she kept popping up on my facebook because we had uh, um uh, mutual friends and she's she does a one woman show her name's um heather rose andrews and uh she does one woman show of jack and hyde which is fantastic and uh, I thought she's just so right for that role. But when you explain to people, this is what I'm thinking of doing, it's always a bit embarrassing, really, because if, they, if they're on the same wavelength, and, and thankfully she was. And um, it was storyboarded out badly. I'm, I'm not bad at drawing, but I rush a bit when I, get, when I get the vibe going. But we kept it all pretty tight, and it pretty much looks exactly like, like, the, the, like the storyboard. So if the planning's right, I think the film comes easily or easier than uh, than doing it before okay and what got you into making horror films i'm sorry say, say again please and what got you into making horror films i think horror has always been a genre i've been interested in it goes back a very long time when i was at what we call primary school in the united kingdom i was about six or seven and i remember my mum very kindly let me stay up late one night to watch the carla frankenstein film and i i remember that evening i really do you know, even like 
the guy who comes out at the beginning, like always like a theatre, and explains to the audience, you know, that you're going to see something quite horrific and uh, sort of, you know, tells them it's just a film and, you know, don't worry about it sort of thing. And that was the start. And uh, as I got a bit older, I used to watch a few more. Um, again, in the UK, we had this series, this is going back a long time, like like 1970s, um, called Appointment with Fear. I was about 10.30, so I was out with stuff a bit late, and it was always like horror films like Tales from the Crypt, Remember the Werewolf, uh, the one with um, Oliver Reed, that really scared me, because I think the makeup in that, you know, when you're that young, <laughs> it was quite scary. But the film that did it for me was a British horror film uh, called The Haunted House of Horror. I think this is available on Netflix or Amazon, one of those two. And that was just a creepy old house, you know, people walking around being picked off one by one. And it had a scene at the end where a guy gets stabbed in, in the lower abdomen, I'll say, and you actually see the knife go in and the blood gush out. And that that vision remained with me a long, long time. And then, of course, as you get older, you creep into things like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the Evil Dead. You know, these are quite horrific in a day. Obviously, American Wolf in London. These are, you know, great films, you know, great horror. And Jaws, of course, even though, there's, you know, there's no real horror monsters running around obviously you've got a shark but it's not like you know a man dressed up with an axe or a knife and and the more clever films like the shining of course um and even recently sort of midsummer you know i think that was the film that 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 made me think you could do this and i'm getting on 59 now i'm getting on a bit and it was during lockdown that i was i was w working i wasn't going out as no one was so i, was, I got a bit of a, a buffer of money because let's not hide from that films cost money right and equipment and everything else and i went and wrote psychochromatic i had a few goals get creative make a good film maybe win you know a couple of laurels which it did and um yeah i went out and did it and that was like two years ago so in that time i've done sort of four short films now nice you, you bring up midsummer are there any newer horror movies that you like that you were like you know what i like what they've done there and something fresh in it yeah, I, I, I'm not. This, this is it. I'm, I should be watching more. I, I just can't watch the Saw films. You know, I just can't watch those. Yeah. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't like the gore sometimes. I know I've done in De Papa. There's a scene which was only a few scenes in the whole film, but you know, which is quite brutal. But that was inspired by the, one of the scenes in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, where the, where the guy walks into the house and Leatherface appears from behind the door, hits him, and then drags that that mm -hmm. shutter across you know that again that's just a, a scene or a sequence that really stuck with me and i thought yeah i'd like to do that one day um as far as sort of modern horror go i'd actually say i'm not really i won't say i'm a big fan of it i just i just you know the ring was good i think it was clever but some of the, you know like i watched the, one of the halloween ones recently and i hate to say it i know it's made a lot of money and i'm sure people have done very well out of it but it is the same old thing and um you know i, I want to be pushed a bit more or tested a bit more i think so um you know uh, I, perhaps i should watch a few more modern ones maybe achieve me up but i'm very much old school creepy dark buildings you know yeah. candles <laughs> flickering that sort of thing uh -huh. and, but yeah because that's, that's what I, was, I grew up with and i the pub was all done in black and white you know because another film that heavily influenced me was david lynch um uh, a razor head that's just a oh. film that always stuck with me yeah and I've, I've stolen quite a lot, like the drones in the background. This is like, I, I'm a musician, but I just like hit a crazy chord on the keyboard with all discordant notes, put it down three or four octaves. So it's just like a drone in the background. And I love building, I like the sound design as well. And he does that a lot where he just got like this low. You know, so yeah, that, he's a big influence of mine. David Lynch and Giant Carpenter, do an yeah. excellent uh, uh, job of scaring you with the sounds, with the environment, yeah. the, the music. I mean, yeah. you get people down with the sound and they're already yeah. scared. The half of the battle is already done. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and, and the, the thing is, when I did the Papa, there's a scene where she's walking. I, again, I hope you'll show it because it's only a short film or at least provide the link. But the scene where she's walking down the corridor, not much is happening there, but you've just got the sound of the footsteps, the drones in there. There's a few little noises off camera as well. And um, it's just wait and anticipation. I think that is uh, an important thing. And I said in three minutes, I think I've cut it to the bone on that. And I think it certainly sort of um, uh, works as far as raising the tension to, 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 to the climax, if you like, um, with, without giving too many spoilers away. Now, is it hard as an indie filmmaker 
horror filmmaker, I should say, to to um, have that fresh idea. Because, I mean, you see a lot of people doing the same thing over and over again. Now, some of them are doing a good job of putting in their own little spin, their own little spice on it. But for the most part, horror has its decades where each decade, it seems like you're seeing the same movie being mm. pushed down your throat for, for 10 years. Yeah. Um, is it is it hard to stand out, especially when you're in that decade and most horror fans are looking for it, you know, like, for instance, the last 10 years, it was the, the whole Exorcist Conjuring series yeah. it was being shoved down your throat. Yeah. And um, is it hard to stand out when that's what everybody's looking for? That is the money ticket. And for you to come out with something completely fresh and different. Well, well, I think that's the thing that I like about Midsummer is that it was very different, very yes. different. But it's bright white. It's just like, you know, the brightest film I think I've ever seen. The colour, saturate, obviously Da Vinci Resolve, um, m- m- you know, made a lot of noise about that. It was edited using that mm-hmm. and colour grading. It was just a, a very different horror film purely because of the brightness of it as opposed to the darkness of what we were associated with. I also think I remember seeing Friday the 13th, the first one when that came out, you know, with that jump scare at the end. I was half expecting that because the nice, the, you know, orchestral nice music yeah. <laughs> arrived and she wakes up in the boat on a beautiful still lake you think yeah of course and that kid i remember the whole audience including myself we all jumped out of our skin and then mm-hmm. i remember watching the fly and of course you know he appears at the end of that and that that sort of jump scare at the end even christine which um it, uh, is it's a carpenter film um when the car gets crushed i hope you're not in this, i'm sure everyone's seen christine but you see just a bit of it move as mm-hmm. it comes, the camera pushes in on it and you're being drawn into this scene of a basically a wrecked square block of metal and just a tiny little bit of the metal moves so i think people are now expecting that sort of surprise at the end yes. and of course, with netflix nowadays of course you know there's 10 minutes to go and the, the, the film's resolved itself but you're saying mm-hmm. to yourself hang on there's 10 minutes to go which means it hasn't resolved itself and you sort of know that there's something else is going to happen so that's been done to death yes. i'm sure I've done it and I have done it and I'm sure other people <laughs> do it. and it will continue to happen. So I think people want that. But I think, as I said, being original now is you've got to make something. You've got to ask those questions and, and prod the, the viewer. Again, if I was clever enough to write that stuff, I would be. But what I'm hoping with, with the puppet, what I'm going to do is to introduce these new characters. We've already got two. Who are, who are quite striking who are they where do they come from and i've got like another three characters now which are completely different and um basically uh, i've got together some writers that i know and i've said look i want to basically start writing you know say a series of eight one hour uh screenplays mm-hmm. we're going to discard two of them two of the worst ones and keep again six really tight ones based on these characters and again that's a bit sort of david lynchy with twin peaks you know all the characters yeah. had like works and stuff and you you may not necessarily know the names but just when they walk on stage you you know you sort of you know who they are or, or what they do and some of their mannerisms and that's sort of what i want to do with, with with the new version of the purpose we have this core set of characters and the difficult thing of course is writing stories around the narratives obviously each episode could be based on a character but how they inter- intertwine with each other how the story moves around who are the good guys who are the bad guys who are they? Where are they? Because it's it's a very dark film, and you can't really make out, you know, the geography of the places. Is I want to like in The Shining. I want it to be one of those sort of impossible places where you can go from A to B, but somehow you've gone via Z, and that doesn't really work, sort of thing. So um, that's that's what I'm looking for. So whether the original or not, I don't really know. <laughs> but <laughs> I want there to be sort of characters that people they will never identify with them but just as in friends for instance all the characters have their own personas i would like that with these crazy characters exactly and 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 that's something you know that you know as a watcher horror fan watcher um character development like i like getting attached to the character i mean i grew up in the 80s i'm used to slashers where yeah you didn't know a damn thing about the characters you know what i mean they were just yeah. bodies for jason well, that was it yeah, tomorrow. there's ten kids, and it's chance that a pretty girl's going to survive. You know, correct. Yeah. <laughs> but that's but over the years. Oh, but older yeah. I've gotten, over the years, my taste for horror has changed. I like characters. I like characters 
that, you know, I care about. I hope for their survival and their safety, you know, and then when they do come to their untimely death, I'm like, oh, boy, I like them, you know. And, and, and that's something, you know, that a lot of great horror directors for now that stand out, that's what they're doing. They're doing, definitely putting more um, attention into the actual character development of the, not say the villain himself, but the, you know, the, everyone else, the supporting cast. Yeah. Uh, you get Again, another, another film I really like is, uh, I like the Alien franchise as such, but I particularly like the very first Alien film. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, uh, the first one that he did, of course, uh, because I don't think anything happens in that film really for 45 minutes or something. Yeah. You know, real slow burner, but you get to know, understand a little bit about the characters. So when things do start happening, you, you, again, you're not just watching someone die. You hopefully care a little bit about them. Yeah, understand how they work, and that's a very brave thing to do for a, for a, well, again at the time used to scare lots of people. That film nowadays you watch it, it's still got its moments. Don't get me wrong, but it's um, it's quite tame. But when it came out, again, I remember seeing that at the cinema and people leaving. And The Exorcist, I still haven't seen all the way through. I just can't watch that film. I find it terrifying. But don't watch that new one. <laughs> don't watch that new one. It's a waste but of it's, money. Man. Yeah, but again, the character development, I think, is yes. right. And with, with what I'd like to do with Depart is says develop the characters a bit more and just sort of see where it goes. I've got two... Two and a half, I'll say two and a half writers involved, invo- not involved yet. They're 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 interested. One of them I've already done two films with, so that's a given. Nice. And another another guy is um, a guy who, who who works with Heather, and he he even though Jacqueline Hyde is a an existing story, he wrote the play for that, which is very different to the book, very different to the films you'd have seen, and it is a one woman show after all. Um, and I had a meeting with him, and he writes, and he, he's he's a clever writer, and I, I think. Uh, you know, with uh, sort of a brains brawn and and some other sort of crazy ideas thrown in, I think it'll be a nice little melting pot job there. We should be able to get some good stuff out of it. Now, do, do you think as an indie filmmaker, since it's, I'm not saying it's easy, because some people got offended when I say easy, but it's, I'll, I'm going to say it's a lot easier to get your project out there, right? Whether it be streaming services, DVDs, whatever, distribution-wise, it's a lot easier to get your um, project out there. Do, do you think that means now that you have to stand out a little more since? I, I would say so now. I, I, There's all, no gatekeepers. Yeah, my my out there at the moment is just pretty much what I've done on YouTube. I'm still learning, you know, and I'm sort of publishing my stuff. Yeah, I enter it, some stuff into festivals and it's done quite well. You know, um, the proper, I've had to enter into things more like, like the cinematography and experimental because it says it's not a traditional film it does tell a story but it leaves the viewer thinking well what was all that about and some, some of the feedback I, I won't use the language i've had has been you know crikey that was exciting <laughs> you know but, but it's the language um because it is it's like it's, you know, it's bang 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 the way it's been cut is it's, it's quite pacey and it's i like techno music as well again from my german trip uh i like sort of Berlin techno music. I've written some music in that, but I thought rather than have just some music playing, let's bring that into the film. So we've got a reel-to-reel recorder, which no one uses anymore, you know. But it looks good on screen. If you just press, you know, if you put a needle on a record, so what? If you put press play on a CD, so what? But having little things like reel reel to where it actually is moving round makes it look good. But to go back to your original question about the, the sort of distribution side of things, I'm still exploring those areas because i don't think i've got anything i actually want to properly sell yet but i think the papa that series has said writing six of those or having six good ones i think i'll then be in a position to go to someone like a bigger production house and say look i've got these characters here are the two short films what do you think Cause i think it lo- it looks good i think you know we, we did quite well we, we were selected for the cinematography on on that on that film and best actress as well um so I think it's along the, along the right line. So if I was to take it outside or, or to a distribution company or a bigger production company, I think that's going to have more legs than perhaps anything else I've done before. So I think the characters can 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 go a long way. I think people want to know where they go. And so if we can write six or eight minus two good stories, which all tie up at the end, or mm-hmm. have it all tied at the beginning. You know, you have the full set at the beginning, and then you, it all spirals out, and you see. You know, that is the journey of how it all came together at the beginning. You know, for instance, the film Gandhi, again, spoiler alert, we all know he was assassinated. 
it starts with him being killed. And then they have mm -hmm. a story about the guy. So there's no reason why you can't have this complete set, starting the film with this thing, whatever it might be. And then we find out how those people have all come to come together to, to start. You know, it's just doing it backwards, basically. Or, or have them all, like in Pulp Fiction, for instance, you know, three or four stories which just intertwine. And then sort of at the end, it all resolves itself, which is a great way of doing it. It is an amazing way to do it. I, I, I'm trying to think. I've seen a movie recently where it started that way. It was the end. And then, like, throughout the movie, you get to see how you got to that point. Yeah. You know, how you got to that point for the end. Um, actually, it wasn't even a horror movie. It was Extraction on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> it starts off with, uh, well, it's not a spoiler. It starts off with him getting shot. And it's like on his bridge, and then and it goes to two days before, you know. Yeah, and so, exactly. and it, it was, it's just a cool way of doing it. Yeah. So, Chaz, how can everyone find you? Well, um, I, another thing I'm working on, I, I'm on. Oh, yes, yes, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I'm on Facebook and I'm on um, as, as on a personal account, but I'm really thinking of get, I would say employing. Obviously, I'll give them some of their time, but I, I know younger people who are very good yes. at social media, and I'm thinking of like doing something for my actual film and channels. I, you know, I said I'm happy to share some links so people can see that stuff, but I want to actually have a separate thing away from me, the person, for my films exactly for that reason. So even though I've been doing it for two years, I said it's been pretty much my own little thing, but now I want to, you know. I say again, you spend a lot of time, you spend a lot of money, you get some nice pats on backs. People say this stuff is good. You know, you, sh you shouldn't be working in IT, which I do as my day job, which is <laughs> time. But with, you know, with, with, with a family and a mortgage, sometimes it's not so easy. So uh, you, have to, like, you have to be real about it, but you can help your product because it is a product. Mm hmm you know, have its own standalone platform. And it's easy these days. I said, so I've got some people I know who, who are very good. You know, they, they do all the, you know, the TikTok, the YouTube, and all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, we're thinking kind of like a proper show. So I think I've got enough material now. I've got like four, five, I think I've got to do, I did Psychochromatic. I did The Taxidermist. I did Beneath the Cedar. I've done The Pup and I've done one called Vital Threads, which is actually not a horror at all. It's more of an environmental thing. And um, nice thing in that, is I've got um, a, guy, a guy called David Knopfler. His brother is Mark Knopfler from the band Dire Straits, which has sold millions of records worldwide. He did the soundtrack on that for me, you know, which is a big, really? big a fan. You know, when I bought the album, what, 40 odd years ago, 43 years ago, I never thought that one of the guys there would be, you know, writing music for one of my short films. That's only a 90 second environmental film, you know. <laughs> so, you know, that could be an advert in itself. You know, we, I, when I watch it, I expect like a, a bank to come up, you know, with Barclays, in the UK, is like the biggest bank, you know, Barclays Bank, looking after your future. And it is like a, a like a little advert, really. Uh, so if I can get my uh, social media in place and my sort of my product, my brand, if you want to call it that in place, I think I could do myself a lot more favours. It is something I will have to do, obviously, if I'm looking to push the papa. Chaz, yeah, so, so I've been doing this YouTube channel for going on seven months now and yeah. um and like i had i'm like oh my goodness in order for my channel girl i have to really get into this social yeah. media instagram and tiktok and yeah like it's a lot yeah. it's a lot but it's like the necessary evil to be found now yeah exactly yeah yeah you can, you can tell people about it and people will watch it your family your friends you'll put it on your facebook feed and you know you know all my films have only got like hundreds of hits. I think a couple of them have got more, more than a thousand, which is great. And I have, you know, I've done some newspaper stuff. Obviously, I've done this as well. Um, I did a thing for local radio as well. So people are, you know, things are out there. It's just, as I said, it's just get it like a congruent approach and just get it all together. And, and as I say, have a, have a platform for my film work. Yes. So I think it's so watch this space. But I said, if you're happy to share the links in the description, yes. that'd be fantastic. And then people can subscribe, of course, and uh, we can we can um, when we'll get the real deal going. Yes. It'd be very easy just to put another video up saying, OK, guys, unbookmark this and bookmark that. Yes. Sort of. <laughs> yeah. But yes, look in my description box and you're going to have the links to all of the pieces. Yeah. Chaz, it was an absolute pleasure having you on. Thank man. you. Listen, anytime you want to promote anything, man, just hit me up. Oh, that's I really cool. to have you back on. I would love to do a whole hour video with you just talking about horror movies in general. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I well, feel like well, it's a good I, conversation there. 
I'm going to uh, do some homework and watch some more than modern stuff. I have seen some of the sort of conjuring ones as well. So, yes. of them. so uh, yeah, and, and none I really enjoyed as well. So, now, uh, have you seen the um, Ty West X series? I don't X and Pearl. No. Oh, watch those. They're great. Okay. I will do. Because uh, we've got Netflix yeah. downstairs. We pay our monthly on it. We, we watch it. Of course we do. But yeah, I should really uh, just uh, start. Yeah, start watching more modern stuff, perhaps. Yes. Yeah. There's a couple of gems out there. I mean, there's a couple, there's some couple really good gems out there, um, especially like in, in the last two or three years. Like some great horror movies, new original horror movies were made in the last couple of years. And um, I just hope they don't sequel them to death, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, some sequels are better than others, I must say. Yeah, so, yeah. I, just, I, just, I just feel like some horror movies are meant to be a standalone and just leave yeah. it alone. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's how I felt about The Exorcist. That's why, before this new one even came out, I said this was going this was going to be a piece of shit. I, I I've been saying it in every single one of my videos, and I've had guests say, "No, no, I don't think so," and, yeah. uh, and it's a piece of crap, and it really is. It's a waste of money. Yeah. Um, and and it's sad because they had such a big budget, and yeah. I understand a movie does has no budget, and it's not good. But like when you have like I think yeah. a movie had like a fifty million dollar budget or something like how do you make a bad movie with a fifty million dollar budget? I don't know. It'd be nice to find out though, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Chaz, it's been a Thank pleasure, you. my friend. Everybody, please Thank check him out. Got Thank the you. link down in my description box. That's lovely. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for coming to the Horror Room. I'm Travis Bruce. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.